But I can see it snowing And in your car the windows are wide open Come on home Come on home No, you don't have to be alone Just come on home Valentine's break hearts and minds and random that old Easter egg ain't got a leg to stand on. Well, I can see that you can't win for trying. And New Year's Eve is bound to leave you crying. Come on home, come on home, well you don't have to be alone, just come on home. Moon and stars hang out in bars just talking And I still love that picture of us walking Just like that old house we thought was haunted Summer's end came faster than we wanted Come on home, come on home, you don't have to be alone, just come on home, come on home, you don't have to be alone. Just come on home. <laughs> <laughs> Sun's up. And I knew I had heard that song somewhere. 
what is that? That's Bruce Coburn. I know it's Bruce Coburn. And I thought for a few minutes, and I sat there trying to remember what, and then I started searching on my phone, looking for the old guitar part, looking for the song. Thinking, it must be obscure. It's got to be an obscure one. I'm not going to find it. And then, of course, it's his hit. And I'll probably figure out that, oh, it's Wondering Where the Lion's Are. But to be honest, I had never really listened to that song. I never really listened to the lyrics. And sitting there in that room with my siblings, I don't know why, but I just had to play that song to them, and I had to make them listen to it. Now, before I say any more, up until that morning, I'd never heard uh, The Lion's Gate. And if, if any of you are like me, and you've never heard this phenomenon, I'll try to explain it a little bit. So I'm sure you've heard of the, the uh, uh, or have heard of the Perseids, or taken the time to, to check them out in the sky, the meteor showers, that come in early August. They're beautiful. And the night that we meet first fell into semi-consciousness, the Perseids were arriving in a very dramatic fashion. Well, there's another astronomical event that accompanies those meteors. Every year, as July wanes and August takes hold, the constellations move around the night sky, and for a brief period, the stars, Sirius, the Earth, the Earth, Sun, and Orion all come into alignment above the Egyptian constructs, the ancient Egyptian constructs of the pyramids of the Great Sphinx. And Sphinx sorry. While the ancient Egyptians are thought to believe that the proximity, proximity of Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, represented God, their God bringing the physical sustenance of the annual floods of the Nile. There also are some that say, and that it is believed that these alignment of the stars signified an opening of a portal, a gateway into space and time, that allowed their sun god, Ra, to travel to the higher realms of consciousness and eternity. All while the Sphinx, the great lion, which sat on his back to the sun, was always there, to protect the gates and secure safe passages, Ra the Sun God traveled between the celestial and the physical realms. There sat that Sphinx at the, there to protect this gate, this portal to eternity. And those who were not ready for such a journey were kept out. But like I said earlier, before that day, I'd never heard of the Lion's Gate. But still, out of nowhere, I heard that song just popped into my head. And despite, despite being a perpetual atheist, and an eternal fatalist, I cannot shake that profound feeling that I heard that particular song out of the blue at that exact moment. Because at that moment, I knew that my mother, my dear mother Mimi, had completed her journey from us into eternity and found her peace in God, whatever the hell it is. She had left us days before, and now with her final breath, she had found her peace in time. And so I ask that you take the time with us to listen to that song as we did that morning and surround her in the love that you have and celebrate her journey into eternal peace. Mm -hmm. 